subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia news line i am usma jafri here are the top stories Indian PM Modi commissions nation's first indigenous aircraft carrier INS Vikrant in defense push. Residents ferry possessions and flood hit Pakistani towns death toll climbs past 1190. And Islamic Emirate calls on US international community to release frozen Afghan assets. And now for all the details. showcasing india's growing prowess of indigenous manufacturing and a major milestone in the path towards self-reliant india prime minister narendra modi commissioned the country's first indigenous aircraft carrier indian naval ship ins vikrant on friday he also unveiled the new naval ensign doing away with the colonial past and befitting the rich indian maritime heritage Prime Minister Narendra Modi commissioned India's first home-built aircraft carrier Indian naval ship INS Vikrant on Friday underlining his government's efforts to boost domestic production to supply a military deployed on two contentious borders After 17 years of construction and test PM Modi commissioned INS Vikrant the navy's second operational aircraft carrier and the largest warship ever built in India at the state run Cochin Shipyard Limited in southern port city of Kochi During the event the prime minister also unveiled the new naval ensign doing away with the colonial past and befitting the rich indian maritime heritage he dedicated the new ensign to chhatrapati shivaji maharaj the founder of the maratha kingdom who had a naval fleet aaj bharat vishv ke un deshon mein shamil ho gaya hai jo swadeshi takniik se itne vishal एयरक्राफ्ट कैरियर का निर्माण करता है आज आईएनएस विक्रांत ने देश को एक नए विश्वास से भर दिया है देश में एक नया भरोसा पैदा कर दिया है Designed to accommodate a crew of about 1600 and a fleet of 30 aircraft, the Vikrant will rely on Russian-designed MiG-29K aircraft that already operate from India's other carrier, the INS Vikramaditya, which India bought from Russia. Boeing and France's Dassault are seeking to provide India with more than two dozen jets for the Vikrant. India is one of the world's largest arms importers, spending 12.4 billion US dollars between 2018 and 2021. but it has been seeking to develop its own manufacturing capabilities as key supplier russia fights a war in ukraine and faces sanctions the vikrant will significantly add to india's maritime capabilities allowing the navy to operate an aircraft carrier on each seaboard alongside its 10 destroyers 12 frigates and 20 corvettes in news from pakistan flood waters have covered much of pakistan's sindh province forcing residents to ferry their possessions across waterlogged towns as they plead for relief sindh with a population of 50 million has been the hardest hit getting 466% more rain than the 30 year average residents of two neighboring pakistani towns in sindh province ferried their possessions across waterlogged towns as people braced for more flooding as a surge of water flowed down the indus river flood waters covered much of sukur and kherpur areas leaving those who could not afford boats to ferry their goods on whatever they could use including large cooking pans sindh with a population of 50 million has been hardest hit getting 466% more rain than the 30 year average an analyst said that climate change factors have contributed to the deadly floods in pakistan that have killed over 1190 people after record monsoon rains and melting glaciers in northern mountains were witnessed this year is the way ittefaq se hamare jo northern areas hain gilgit baltistan ke wahan gilaf ke 16 events hote hain jo glacial 
लेक आउटबर्स्ट फ्लड होते हैं जिसकी वजह से ग्लेशियर गर्मी बढ़ने की वजह से ग्लेशियर्स का पिघलना जो जो अमल होता है उसे ग्लॉफ कहते हैं तो 16 इवेंट्स हम उमन पाँच छः इवेंट्स हुआ करते हैं लेकिन इस सीज़न में 16 इवेंट्स हुए हैं तो ये सारी चीज़ें जो हैं ये असल में क्लाइमेट चेंज ही बुनियादी वजह है इनकी अमेड लूमिंग फूड क्राइसिस एज डेविस्टेटिंग रेन्स हैव रून क्रॉप इन डिस्ट्रप्टेड सप्लाईज वेजिटेबल एंड फ्रूट प्राइजेस हैव सोड एक क्रॉस दंट्री Pakistan's consumer price index surged to a multi-decade high of 27.3% in August from a year earlier. Government data showed on Thursday. Pakistan's 220 million people were already facing rampant inflation before the flooding and the economy is in turmoil with fast depleting foreign reserves and a record fall of the rupee against the dollar. More on news from Pakistan. Pakistan's ousted Prime Minister and opposition PTI party chief Imran Khan on Thursday reiterated that he would continue with his movement against the ruling government despite the floods. Khan said the government has asked him to sit idle but he will help the flood victims more than them. Pakistan's former Prime Minister and PTI chief Imran Khan said on Thursday that he would keep up with his political activities against incumbent PM Shahbaz Sharif government despite the floods that have wreaked havoc across the country. Addressing a gathering of lawyers in Sargodha, Khan said the ruling government has asked him to sit idle but he will help the flood victims more than them. Khan has repeatedly demanded snap elections since April when he was ousted in a parliamentary vote. इमरान खान को कह अच्छा जी सलाब आ गया इमरान खान चुप करके तस्लीम कर लो इनको मैं इन शलाब में इन सब से ज्यादा काम करूंगा लेकिन तुम्हारा भी पीछा नहीं छोड़ूंगा किसी सूरत मैं इन चोरों को तस्लीम नहीं करूंगा The PTI chief further claimed that a conspiracy is being held to have him declared ineligible to contest elections as multiple court cases are being filed against him A Pakistani court on Thursday extended Khan's pre-arrest bail for 2 weeks on terrorism charges relating to a speech in which he allegedly threatened a judge and senior police officials. The bail was approved until September 12. News just in. A high-profile pro-Taliban cleric Mujib Rahman Ansari and more than 15 others were killed in a blast at a mosque in Afghanistan's western Herat city during Friday prayers according to local media reports. Ansari had spoken strongly in defense of the Taliban at a large gathering of scholars and elders organized by the group in late June condemning anyone who stood against their administration. There was no immediate claim of responsibility for the blast till the last reports came in. Moving on, the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan has urged the United States and international community to unfreeze the assets of central bank in wake of the recent floods and earthquakes in the country at a conference to collect aid for afghans acting foreign minister amir khan muttaqi said humanitarian matters should be separated from politics Afghanistan's foreign ministry on Thursday held a conference to collect aid for Afghans who have been affected by recent floods and earthquake in the country. During the conference, the Islamic Emirate urged the United States and international community to unfreeze Afghan central bank's assets. Acting Foreign Minister Amir Khan Muttaqi asserted that release of Afghan assets is necessary in the current situation. He called on the international community to unfreeze the frozen assets and lift all sanctions to pave the way for trade and export. Humanitarian matters should be separated from politics, he added. The Iran ambassador in Kabul also called on the international community to press the US to release Afghanistan's assets. According to economist, there is a need to release Afghan assets to recover the country's economy. Billions of dollars in Afghan central bank reserves held mainly in the United States have been frozen by foreign governments to prevent it from falling into Taliban hands. Russia and China have called for those funds to be released. The conference took place at a time when the Taliban government marked the first anniversary of the withdrawal of US led forces on Wednesday and called on the international community to learn from the experience and accept them as the legitimate government. Afghanistan has long relied heavily on development aid which was cut as the international community demanded the Taliban respect human rights 
particularly girls and women whose access to work and school has been limited by the Islamists. In news from Sri Lanka, a day after Sri Lanka reached a preliminary agreement with the IMF for a loan program of about 2.9 billion US dollars, Japanese Finance Minister Shunishi Suzuki urged all creditor countries to discuss Sri Lanka's debt restructuring. The island nation is battling its worst economic crisis since independence in 1948. Japanese Finance Minister Shunuchi Suzuki on Friday urged all creditor nations, including India and China, to discuss Sri Lanka's debt restructuring after the crisis hit South Asian nation reached a loan agreement with the International Monetary Fund. This comes a day after Sri Lanka has reached a preliminary agreement with the IMF for a loan of about 2.9 billion US dollars, the global tender said on Thursday as the country seeks a way out of its worst economic crisis since independence from Britain in 1948. COVID-19 disrupted Sri Lanka's tourism-reliant economy and slashed remittances from workers overseas. The damage was compounded by rising oil prices, populist tax cuts and a seven-month ban last year on imports of chemical fertilizers that devastated agriculture. This brought chronic shortages of basic goods, runaway inflation and mass protests that forced the then-president Gotabaya Rajapaksa to flee, leaving his successor Ranil Vikramasinghe to tackle restructuring billions of dollars in debt to China and other countries. Meanwhile, Sri Lanka's highest court has allowed former finance minister Basil Rajapaksa to travel overseas until January 15. Anti-corruption body Transparency International Sri Lanka said on Friday. Reports suggest that his brother and former president Gotabaya Rajapaksa will return to the country from Thailand on Saturday, weeks after fleeing a popular uprising in July. Moving on. Tibetans in India on Friday celebrated 62 years of the introduction of the democratic system in exile by their spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama. The Tibetan government in exile has been functioning in India since 1960. Tibetans in India's northern hill town of Dharamshala commemorated the 62nd Tibetan Democracy Day on Friday to mark the introduction of Tibetan democracy system in exile by the spiritual leader the Dalai Lama in 1960. The community gathered at the main Buddhist temple and the occasion was marked with cultural performances. The Central Tibetan Administration or the Government in Exile which comprises the Prime Minister, a Council of Ministers and a Parliament in Exile has been functioning in India since 1960. The Dalai Lama and many others fled Tibet following a failed uprising against the Chinese occupation of their homeland in 1959. India is home to almost 100,000 Tibetans. Uh, the message that I can easily send to China is this is the vision of Tibetans. This is the vision for Tibet, a free, and, a free independent and de democracy for Tibet. And you know what they have been doing the the, the message that they have been sen sending across the world is totalitarianism in the form of communism is the only form that works but this is not something that we look forward to what we look forward to is democracy the dalai lama has long been at loggerheads over tibet with china which brands him a reactionary and a separatist the dalai lama who won the nobel peace prize in 1989 says he seeks greater rights including religious freedom and true autonomy for tibetans a cultural festival at Banks of the Wooler Lake in India's Jammu in Kashmir attracted scores of visitors this week. The event witnessed painting, dance and folk music competitions. It aimed to boost tourism at Wooler, known as the Asia's largest freshwater lake. In a bid to promote Wooler Lake as a prime tourist destination in Bandipura district of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory, Wooler Lake Festival was organized on the banks of the picturesque lake by the tourism department in collaboration with the Indian Army. Young artists, especially girls, participated in music, painting and dancing competitions organized for school students from different districts as part of the event. The folk travel songs left the audiences spellbound. Several stalls of food items and clothes were also put up during the festival. The visitors and locals appreciated the efforts and called it a great exposure for tourism of the Kashmir Valley.
यही एक चीज़ है जो रोज़गार हमें दे सकती है हमारे पास कोई वसाइल नहीं है हमारे पास टूरिज़म है हमें अल्लाह ताला ने दिया ऊपर वाले ने दिया है लेकिन हमें इसको दिखाना है लोगों का अगर यहाँ टूरिस्ट आ जाए तो हमारा रोज़गार बढ़ जाएगा हमारे जो नौजवान हैं उनको रोज़गार मिलेगा The festival generated awareness about the immense sports and cultural potential of Wooler Lake. The lake is also known as Asia's largest freshwater lake. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com/sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at sasianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.